Hello, I'm Karen Christensen, and I have the great pleasure of talking to Antoine Buret, my old friend whom I've only so far met on Zoom, but we've had quite a few conversations. Um, last, what was it, in the winter when you were in Costa Rica? I think it was in the, in the summer. In the summer. And um, since then, he's published a book on third places in France. And um, we're now catching up with him back in Europe uh, and and picking up our conversation or perhaps trying to 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 go back to some of the topics we've discussed before. Uh, I have greater understanding of Antoine's work now that I've seen at least uh, a, a rough Google translation of of his very interesting text. And it's been very helpful to me as I work on the new edition of The Great Good Place. So welcome. Thank you, Karen. Hello, everybody. I'm very glad to, to speak with you again. It was a while. Um, I enjoy that you 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 have a, a vision of my work now because you, you read a little bit of my text. Uh, actually, when we met, I was uh, writing this book. And it was really uh, helpful for me to speak with you due to your experience with uh, Oldenburg and to, due to your vision of tall place. Because me, I, 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 I studied tall places and I wrote about it uh, from my European point of view. Uh, and it was really helpful to, to, to speak with you and to add also an American point of view and to see how it connects. And maybe a lot of time, how it, how it was not uh, the same vision at all. Um, and this um, this phenomenon we can see it in Oldenburg texts because Oldenburg tried to to uh, to to understand the European vision of thought places. And uh, when I discover him, for me it was a little bit I don't know how to say that in English folkloric. Ah, like that. yes, it's uh, interesting. And you use the term o Oldenburgian in the book, which I. I I think Ray would be most amused by. <laughs> True, because, you know, he talk a lot about a, a cafe and bistro, you know, like as an ideal tip. I don't know how to say that, like as a, a model of tall places. But uh, I, or, I, uh, I, I was born in a bistro, in a cafe. My, my parents uh, own a bistro and a cafe. So I grew up in, uh, in that kind of tall places. And, and now I, when I, I, um, I discovered Oldenburg, I it was for me delicious. It was some something like uh, okay, he, he understands something, but in, in the same time, uh, it's like um, an idealistic vision of Europe. It's not exactly like that. So a, just, a kind of American romanticization of it's like uh, Emily in Paris top places I did. <laughs> well, it's funny because I lived in England for close to 15 years from the time I was in my late teens until I was in my um, early 30s. So, in fact, when I first was given a copy of The Great Good Place, although I was in the States, I'd lived in London at the time. Uh, and I have come more and more to think that pubs are hugely important. And some of them are still they still have those qualities that Ray wrote about in his chapter on the English pub. So, you know, for us, the challenge is kind of parsing it. So we're saying it's not, the romantic view is not accurate anymore, but there is some truth there. Yeah, true. True. And perhaps a truth that we want to do something with now. Uh, and I gather that when you, from the book, something I hadn't picked up is that you first heard of me or read something about me because you'd gone looking for Ray. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was searching about Ray and I discovered your work on that. Right. And then uh, someone else, someone I knew, had mentioned your work. And that's how we connected. So we're both working on it from different points of view. And because I particularly want to internationalize, your knowledge is not by any means just of France. You've spent time in Eastern Europe and in Latin America. Yes, so those exactly. are parts of the world that I don't know. So th that, that was really helpful. 
Um, and I am trying to make the book, um, the new version, less American, and I would like it not to be Emily in Paris. <laughs> so I'm going to, when I get to that, that section, I'm definitely going to have you read it and, and, and correct it. It was, it was, um, no, no, but uh, no, I, I say that because um, when, when I talk about a, a European vision of third place and a, a, a kind of idealization of uh, European third place, it's because we, we can see, and I wrote about it in my book, that uh, the, the European culture, all the European, the European culture um, was um, uh, developed in all the world. Um, I, I say that because I study a lot, uh, as you say, third place in America, South America, Caribbean, and uh, and you saw that the third place, the European culture of third place, what I call Oldenburgian third place, we can see the same in Europe and then in Caribbean and South America, with different name but uh, same use and same services. Uh, what is interesting is when you. Uh, start to thinking about third place uh, not in a European way and you discover other third place like in the streets like uh, uh, in uh, Cuba I discovered uh, I don't know how to say that in Cuba I talk about it in my in my book uh, about uh, some specific third place due to the communism culture you know I don't know how to say like the queue uh, the queue when, when you wait uh, yes. I, just, I, don't, I don't know how to say that in English oh, it in when line, you, wait, you mean if you're like waiting for your rationed food or something? <laughs> for documents, not exactly for rationed food, but for <laughs> documents. And I make a, a huge cartography in uh, in Cuba and uh, to say, what is your third place? What is your own third place? Yes. It was not coffee. It was not coffee shop. It was not pub. It was not, it mm -hmm. was not restaurants. But uh -huh. some of the lot, it was the line. And it's, for me, it was fantastic. It oh, says, that's very interesting. I had, that's a section I haven't read. But it, it what it reminds me of is when I visited Poland when I was young and right before the wall fell. And I was staying with an American friend, but he was doing exams. And, and so he gave me his ration book to, so I could do the shopping. And there were lines and obviously very consistent lines too. You know, you would turn up on certain days or whatever to to get whatever the food was that was being released then. So I can easily see that that would be important. Hmm. Even um, in, in, in Romania, I, I'm, I used to live in Romania for a lot of time. So when I start working on that book, I went in Romania to, to study what is the, tell, the Romanian tell place. For sure, there is some cafe, there is some kind of typical cafe, a Romanian cafe. Okay, but a lot of people didn't have the money to go every day to the coffee, to the coffee, even for drinking a beer or some uh, or a typical. Yes. Alcohol. So where did they do? They, where did they go? They go uh, uh, downstairs of the block, you know. Mm -hmm. There is a bench, and they stay there. And the bench is the third place of all the neighborhood. And yeah. I, I need. I think that for us, it's important to have all that vision that the other Bergen third place. It's for me, and I, I, I read something about that. It's a kind of bogey's third place, I think. Mm -hmm. Even is that this the poor clubs? Uh, yes, the third place is a poor club. In his book, he say that the third, a third place is a is the poor clubs. Mm -hmm. It's a great sentences, but it still remain a bogey's place because you need to pay something to go there. Well, that's a really interesting point that's come up a lot because. Nowadays in America, people are using the term third place, but they're applying it to places that are membership with membership fees, um, sometimes substantial, which obviously doesn't fit the old Oldenburgian model, but isn't practical for people. One of the things I've learned about China is that under the communists, there was something called in because they organized people's housing in blocks and people were very crowded. So there was certainly lots of activity, including cooking, cooperative cooking on the street or in the courtyards. Um, but they also had something called a hot water house. And it was a place where you could simply get hot water. I mean, maybe you'd pay some tiny amount, but you could bring your own tea or you could just drink, sit there and chat and drink hot water. So it was as cheap as could possibly be imagined. 
um, and we seem to have lost, you know, it becomes more and more difficult to find places to gather that don't cost money, let alone, you know, that lots of things, uh, you know, are, are not just costing something, but costing a lot, mm -hmm. which completely changes the whole dynamic. It certainly doesn't make for a place that everyone can go. Mm -hmm. It excludes people right off the bat. Yeah. And it's why it's why the, the the work of Oldenburg is important, and 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 I took a lot of pleasure to 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 study it uh, and to to reactualize the knowledge of Oldenburg in France. This is the the the, the objective of my book to say, oh, okay, in France we didn't read Oldenburg actually. We talk about a lot about third place. Uh, total places. There is a, a, a public policy about third places, but nobody wrote about Oldenburg. Uh, because can you explain how the term came to be used in France? Oh, okay, um, it's, it, it, it's a long story, and I think uh, it's the story linked to the to the world itself. Uh, I mean when. Oldenburg creates uh, the word third places. It creates um, a communication artifact. Uh, I, I used to say uh, com a communication weapons. Yes. Uh, need to create some a, a word that can be used by people to uh, to uh, to preserve their their own uh, uh, localization. To 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 uh, to, um, to say to politician and um, and uh, urbanism, we need place to social for sociabilization. But when he created this world, he created when he created this uh, communication artifact. He created a world that can be easily used by some uh, firm, big firm, uh, Starbucks, for example. Right. I wondered if that was the route by which it got to France, because after Ray first essentially gave a name to something people already knew, it was. It wasn't that he was describing something unfamiliar. It's just that all of a sudden they said, ah, that's what it is. That's we, what I've experienced. That's what I enjoy, or that's what I miss. Yeah. Any of any of those. But then Howard Schultz, when he founded Starbucks, picked up the term. So that was, and some planners picked it up. So there was obviously transmission. Yeah. Do you think it was Starbucks that brought it to France? That would be really um, France is not Starbucks, but it starts with Starbucks when they decide to create the third place, the American North American third places. They want to build the North American third places. In France, it's arrived with co-working place. You know, in the early uh, uh, 20th century, uh, the co-working market start to grow up with this new ideology of working, with collaborative working. And uh, they grew up also in France. And uh, it arrived in uh, 2005, I think, 2006 in France, when first co-working place arrived and they say, oh, we are not some, we are not a working place. We are third places. And it starts like that. We are a third place. A co uh -huh. place and everything go on with this idea in France that's the first the first kind of third place is a co-working place. So it's a place, a cool place where people can gather and also work, met, etc., etc. And everything starts like that. And all the political ID behind this world uh, was not um, taken. Uh, it was an, an economic view, an economical view, far away from Oldenburg. Far away. And who who benefited? What companies benefited? Because the government, I gather, has promoted it. So who 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 did it that that using that term? Who did it help? It's not so linear. Um, you know, I don't know how, if it exists in uh, in in America. The um, education popular. I don't know how to say that. Popular education. It's a. Uh, it's uh, something really uh, important in France. Uh, 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 it's a movement, big movement, a whole movement. When uh, where you work, that people can learn everything, empower, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we call it education populaire. And I mean, sorry. like lifelong learning would be a kind of. Oh, it's deeper than that. It's yeah? more, uh, more uh, militant, more, uh, more political than that. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know how to say that in English, education popular. Yeah. Um, so there's two movements. There's the startup movement, 
startup movement with co-working place that's you try to uh, start to use this world top places okay to name the new place of work and in the same time there is some people who are working for that people uh, can uh, learn better uh, do it their self um, do it with their own for poor people that can do things uh, that try to use in the same time the world so do you have this battle between this movement and the startup movement and um, mm -hmm. i to be honest i discovered the world uh, at uh, in this middle you know it was startup and the rest and um, everybody talk about third place and nobody really know what it means so you know in france third place is translated in a strange way uh, because we didn't say third place as the the troisième place we say third as as a tier okay yeah um, it's the same word in English. You say third for the. You, you don't have the, the word tier, but in France, tier it's a really philosophical word. So we can really think about it. I have a lot of idea about it. You can say it's another place. It's a place Is other. Is it like a terrain or a level? Tier, you say? You mean the word tier? Yeah, the tier. Yeah. Uh, in English, it's, it's translated third. It's uh, just third, but it's not troisième. It's so a, interesting. I have a lot of philosophy about the tier. And the lu is not, is, is, I mean, one, all of us know the word place, which means place, doesn't it? Or plaza. In French, we say, we say lieu. So there's a lot of, of battle of the word in France. So yeah. some, sometimes people translate third places by troisième lieu. Okay, it's you can say that. Others say troisième place. Ah. Others say tiers lieu. So <laughs> we are friends. I we see. Are, we are <laughs> of course, arguing over the language, of course, naturally. Um, <laughs> but it, but it, in France, is it is it used? Does is it applied to what we call a third place? Is it used in discussion of saving bistros and cafes? Not at all. Not at all, right? I, it starts right now because because of my work and a lot of, the work of a lot of people. But at the beginning uh, and uh, until last year, I can say, uh, nobody talked about third place thinking about bistro and cafe. Nobody talked about defending third places always defending cafe and bistro. They was thinking, defending maker place, maker space, sorry, hacker space, co-working space, etc. This kind of hybrid and new which place. really surprises people here who who <laughs> use the term. It, it it's um not at all the first thing that people think of. Yeah, but when you think about that, it's not so crazy because uh in a way and uh you, you you can see, for example, the the Wikipedia page in French for uh, hackerspace, hackerspace, mm -hmm. and the the definition in the Wiki, French Wikipedia page of hackerspace is a third place for hacker, and it's right. Mm -hmm. Hacker is a third place for hacker. So for me, I understand that as a new kind of third place, and. I think it's really interesting because it says something about our, so uh, our society. There's no more bistro. So bistro has changed a lot. There's, and there's no, there's no more the same use of bistro in our culture. And so we create other third places. And for example, some fab lab, some hacker space at the role of third place. For a new but, generation. But those are not places that would be open to all or that all people of all sorts would want to go there. There are many people. It's not that maybe you couldn't walk. I mean, I'm sure I could walk into a hacker space, but would I want to be there and would I feel welcome? I mean, I might not feel unwelcome, but it's not a place where I'd sit and have the the kind of informal conviviality that you made you know a real point of in your book the yeah. places of of you know relaxed sociability hey, sociability is 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 is, 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 uh, is not 
only about uh, relaxing and uh, it can be about working on something. I, I say that because, for example, I, I with some um, colleagues, uh, we we create uh, a fab lab in the uni in the Geneva University. Um, it's a fab lab open to everybody. And actually, uh, when I came back in Geneva, uh, this place and is my third place. I didn't go so many time in coffee and. Uh, coffee shop because it's expensive and I I go there but I don't I have some other stuff to do but if I want to spend good time to see my friends to work a little bit but also to to joke to to feel good I go there and this fab lab is my third place and I know that I work with the uh, fab manager the owner of the the third place and uh, the of the fab lab and um, he wanted to to create to make this fab lab a third place because if he understood that for the students and for the neighbor this place can be important so you go there not only for drinking the services the principal services is not a drink it's not a coffee it's some uh, 3d printer some uh, some technical stuff but it's the same work. My friend is a farm manager, but he's like a barman. He, he actually do the same work. He, he, yes, he's funny. He know everybody. He's like a helpful uh, nurse, um, informal nurse, sorry. Uh, so that's the work that we try to do with third places in this region to transform uh, the traditional third place, I mean coffee, in other, from other place, some fab lab now, like some library, uh, are the new third places. And it's cool with that. I'm really cool with that. And you don't feel that the combination, the fact that people are working there makes a difference. Mm. Because so I, that's, the, to, to me, and I think to, to Ray Oldenburg, the idea that the idea of a third place is a place where you're not working, where you don't have responsibilities. That's one of the key points about it is I'm, that, is that even at home people, some people, they want, you know, to be at home, but at least I feel, you know, if I'm at home, I have responsibilities of one kind or another. I'm and happy. same thing with a, a place where I'm working that a third place is where you go and you let your hair down and you just be you I, I actually uh i have a lot of discussion about that point with a lot of uh, uh sociali sociologists of work uh and they make a, a, a separation between uh, work and productive work and i think that uh, oldenburg uh, was saying that in third place you don't have productive work but you work on something. You can work on ID. You can work on uh, art. You can work on some your home projects. Uh, you can work on political uh, opinion. It's a kind of work also. It's not a productive or a productive work. But when he, 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 he wrote, uh, when Oldenburg wrote a lot of pages about uh, cafe. Uh, in cafe, what happened in cafe, and why the coffee are so important? Cafe was so imp even the pub, uh, even the colo colonial tavern was so important in our culture. It's not because people came and have good time. It's also because they they they, they use this place to create lot of a uh, lot of um, of great work of artwork of political work. Uh, it's well, because... conversation though they weren't creating the things in. They weren't. Maybe someone was writing things down from the conversations, but they weren't. It wasn't as though you had someone working on you know a bit of metal work and someone doing something on a three D printer and you know that it was still you know everyone was. People were together. I mean, not necessarily everyone, but it's about conversation. And I absolutely agree. I mean, my best conversations are when, you know, when I'm with people who are interested in some of the things I'm interested in. And I can have a talk about, about China or about sustainability or some other, you know, or some other even gardening because I like to garden. But um 
but to have people doing, uh, uh, on the other hand, there's the idea of many people with third places, they're doing something with their hands, aren't they? I mean, that would be the other argument. People are playing cards or playing mud, and they're talking while they're doing some activity. Uh, you're, you're right, but I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. That, that's the main problem for me in the Oldenburg work. <laughs> Uh, is that he didn't um, uh, realize that in a third place you can also have some kind of work and if you spend time there uh, and also with the new way of working you can go there work a little bit for your own project have a conversation work with a collective on a collective a collective project uh, discuss about a political uh, manifestation. And you can do all that stuff in the same place. And it's People not... People have always done that in their workplaces. That's the whole water cooler. I don't know if you say that in France, but here we talk about the water cooler conversations, the water cooler relationships in an office. That That's where people meet and hang out. That used to. I don't know if it happens now. but um, and, and the sort of chatting back and forth, that's part of a, any traditional workplace. That's not different. Sorry, I don't. I didn't. I'm not sure that I'm. Really in an, if you went to a a big office building of any kind, people are having side conversations about, you know, their, you know, riding or their sports plans or politics. Maybe avoiding politics these days, but lots of talk about other things, um, mm -hmm. in the course of the day. And the water cooler was the, you know, in, in old fashioned offices was the place where everyone met, men and women, people of every level in the office would go to get water or maybe to go to someplace to get coffee. But water cooler is our sort of shorthand for that kind of mm. informal meeting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, I'm sure that we, that we agree on that point. It's it's only that, um, you know, I was talking with uh, someone from the CERN. You know, what is the CERN? The CERN is the big uh, European and uh, international uh, laboratory that is based in Geneva. Mm -hmm. And I was asking asking him, I was talking with him about third places because he was really interesting about that ID. And he was saying, oh, but we have a big third place in the CERN. Uh -huh. uh, this is the, the place when, where all the scientists eat and they spend all the time eating. So the third place of the CERN, it's where the people eat, but when they eat, they spend good time, but they also work. They also exchange right, ideas. But that would not be something that um, that that Ray would call a third place. That that's a perfectly good place, but it's not the same thing. It's it's. Um, but perhaps we'll have to continue this discussion later because I want to. We're going to try and keep these recordings short so we can tackle further topics in in later episodes. Um, Maybe we should have some, uh, and and it's it's good to think about this because I think it's see my concern is that people have said oh traditional third places the old fashioned kind where you could just relax and not work they don't exist anymore so we're gonna start making do with other places that still existed people ate together at work forever um that's nothing new but it's not the same thing that that ray had in mind that he was identifying and i think that that's also an important thing um that would be my argument for you i agree with you and i i'm sure and i hope that we will continue this conversation and to finish uh i i will say that maybe in this vision uh the best example of the limit of this idea of tall places only for pleasure it's starbucks with the the problem that starbucks met in uh, 2013 and 2016 there is this story about Starbucks uh, in Philadelphia and also in uh, with, with the uh, guns rights debate, where people try to use some Starbucks because they don't have 
any other place to meet to create some debate about the guns' rights. And the owner of Starbucks says, no, 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 you can't do this here because we are a place where you only, we are a place for drinking coffee to stay cool. But if you're at a place, you have to, to accept to be a place for debate, to accept to be a place for working ID. And uh, so they decide to be no more a third place, to be no more, uh, uh, to, to didn't say that third place, Starbucks is a third place, but because they can't uh, uh, host that kind of debate, political debate. So I just finished by that. Yeah. I say, a third place, you have to be also a place where you, the political idea is working. So it's not right. But that was in the United States in a highly polarized situation and very commercial. So they're trying to keep everyone happy because they need to keep the customers coming in. So I'm not, you know, but we'll come back to Starbucks because it comes in when we talk about the, the virtual third place too. Thank you very much. I look forward to another conversation. I'm going to stop the recording now. Um, just to hang on a sec though, okay? Mm -hmm.